Welcome back everyone, I'm Danny the Dinosaur Drawer and today I'm going to be showing you all how to draw the Spinosaurus vs Carcharodontosaurus from BBC's Planet Dinosaur. So I've got a pencil, an eraser, and some paper today. That's going to be the equipment we're going to use to start off our drawing and then later we will be penning in our dinosaurs to make them look even cooler. So get your equipment out and we will begin the tutorial. So let us begin with an outline. Our Spinosaurus will be on the left and the Carcharodontosaurus on the right. So we got our Spinosaurus here. This will be the sail of the Spinosaurus. It's going to be going off the page. We're not going to be able to see the whole body, unfortunately. This round oval will represent the body. This is going to be the sail. I want to be able to fit both dinosaurs on my paper. It's not very big. So we got head of Spinosaurus, it's going to have his jaws opened, neck, it's very powerful front arms, front limbs, then we're going to have part of its back leg showing, and this is like the more realistic looking Spinosaurus, it's not like the one from Jurassic Park 3 or anything, this is the one that I guess scientists have agreed on is what is the realistic Spinosaurus. So the back legs are going to be a little bit shorter than what pop culture is used to seeing. But yeah, that's a pretty good outline of Spinosaurus. At least the proportions are decent. So our Carcharodontosaurus is going to be a little bit closer to where we are, the viewer. Its leg is going to be actually right here, looking quite large with its calf. So the Spinosaurus has like got a kill here. So put the kill on the ground. I'm not sure what type of dinosaur this is. It looks like an iguanodon, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's not an iguanodon, but it, it is for sure some sort of duck billed dinosaur, which were like the most helpless of the herbivorous dinosaurs. They have like no armor, no spikes, nothing. <laughs> And I think their only weapon was their tail, probably. But yeah, Carcharodontosaurus has much smaller arms than the Spinosaurus. But it could have a stronger bite. But I think in the video, I, I just saw it today, the <laughs> Spinosaurus triumphs over the Carcharodontosaurus. The Carcharodontosaurus was a large dinosaur. Like people, they made it look a little bit smaller. I think in the in the video, the Planet Dinosaur clip, because Carcharodontosaurus is like huge. Its its jaws are enormous, and it could have weighed more than Spinosaurus possibly. But yeah, I want to make the head look like it's facing that way. And that is something I've struggled with in drawing, is like perspective, and so we will figure it out together. <laughs> okay, here's our Spinosaurus head. So yeah, this is the basic outline. It's a little bit rough, it looks like a child's drawing, but we will work on making it look better. There's also some trees in the background, which I think we'd miss out if we didn't put them in. it add some makes the drawing look a little bit more realistic. They're just simple trunks. We don't have to draw any leaves or things that are too complicated. So, And you don't have to put in the trees. I'm going to put them lightly in the background. Alright, I think we can move on to the next stage, which will be just making the dinosaurs look a little bit more realistic. Alright, so we will be doing pen stage, which is always my favorite, but before that we're going to have to, yeah, put some more refinement into our dinosaurs. So we'll put in the little spines, that's why it's called Spinosaurus. It should be called Salosaurus, <laughs> because of the sail on its back, but yeah, I guess it's called, yeah, the spines are what the paleontologists saw when I discovered it. It's really a cool dinosaur by the way guys. I love Spinosaurus. I 
Okay, so we're going to put in the feet. Dinosaur feet can be challenging. Um, I've said that a bunch of times in my different videos. But yeah, to make them actually look like they're on the ground, <laughs> like right now, it looks pretty good. We'll leave it like that. Put in this foot. See, so yeah, like I said, the legs of Spinosaurus are quite short. They're not exactly stubby, though. They're still, it's still going to be a, a two-legged dinosaur. But it has the option of leaning on its front limbs when it wants to. And Spinosaurus has some huge claw, like finger claws. They're like mean, and they're, they're thick too. They're kind of different from the Indominus Rex, which had those like thin, cruel looking, like razor sharp claws. The Spinosaurus has also sharp claws, but they're a little bit more like, they're thicker and... I don't know what to compare them to. They're just like heavier. Equally, equally lethal. It's like maybe comparing like a bear's claws to like a tiger's claws. Like the tiger would be comparable to the Indominus Rex and the Spinosaurus to the bear. All right, guys, we can put in the neck next. It's going to be looking a little bit short, but that's just because of the angle. It's supposed to be looking at the Carcharodontosaurus. I should do a better job trying to explain what I'm actually drawing. Um, so let's draw out the back of the head right now. Make a shape like that. I do go a little bit too fast, I think, with the, with the tutorials. So I'm going to do the front. The snout there. The nose is going to be right about here. The jawline curves up a bit and then curves down. Really looks like a crocodile there. And then the jaw gets thicker at the back here. So Spinosaurus has got some interesting teeth. There's some really large ones up front. They get tiny bit smaller and they get large again. And then they fade off. So perfect for catching fish. But also like you wouldn't want to be bitten by that if you're carcard on Saurus. It's the type of bite that would, yeah, really leave some big wounds. I'll put the eye. We want to make sure the eye looks like it's looking at the opponent. It's got a little frill decoration on top there. There's going to be a cup here for the tip of the bottom jaw, which is very long and narrow. But guys, I like what I'm seeing. It looks good. I'm going to add some studs. It's got some little bony studs. Very cool looking Spinosaurus. The trees um, don't need much more refining. Except you just might want to decide whether to do them or not. Also, you want to make sure where each one ends on the ground here. To make the perspective look correct. This dinosaur, the duck-billed one, does not need too much attention. It's already dead and just like, you guys could leave it out if you wanted to, to make it a fight just between the two dinosaurs. But this, uh, this at least uh, gives the picture a little bit more story, so I'd recommend drawing it. It's gonna have a stripe pattern, but don't make it too detailed. We got a few rocks, just little things. Um, but we can move on to the Carcharodontosaurus, which I think is going to be the hardest thing to draw, especially the head, because we're looking at the inside of the top jaw from this angle. Let me erase this line. We're going to put in that muscle that opens and closes the jaw. 
say Carcharodontosaurus is a powerful bite. It also had like really like interesting teeth. That's why it was called um I think Carcar means shark and Don means tooth. So it means and Saurus means lizard. So I think it, the name translates shark tooth lizard. Which is interesting. It means like the teeth had like mimicked the teeth of a shark. And they're all about the same size. They're very razor sharp. They got little serrated edges. Perfect for slicing through meat. So the car Carcharodontosaurus was not just some old random predator predatory dinosaur. It was like one of the top killers to ever live. And it could pro probably probably beat um Spinosaurus if Spinosaurus had an off day, you know? Or if it got lucky and took it by surprise. But yeah, I think most of us would bet our money with the Spinosaurus because <laughs> those huge claws and stuff. But our Carcharodontosaurus is looking good. We want to put in a vein next. It's got some stripes. We want to make the neck look nice and rounded. Then as the dinosaur gets closer to us, it's going to get larger. It's one of the rules of perspective. Put in the shoulder. Now the upper arm. Elbow and forearms. It's going to have three fingers. Its arms were not useless completely. They're still, they still could be used for something when it got close enough. Definitely bigger than those of Carnotaurus. Okay, stripes. It's almost more like blotches than stripes. And this looks like a nice plump dinosaur. It's not like starving or anything. So that shows it's healthy and ready to fight. <laughs> um, let's add some wrink some more yeah wrinkles and lines to the leg here. It's kind of strong looking calf muscle. And then we're not gonna be able to see much of the tail at all. Also, guys, I'm ending the drawing right here, at, like this line. It's like my little border line. I might also put one on the top here. It's more of like a landscape drawing. But guys, I think it's time to move on to the pen stage. I really am enjoying how this looks. I'm very pleased. I hope you guys are pleased as well. So we will begin by penning the Spinosaurus in. Adding detail. So we're going to have like a little bit of like a wave going on over each individual spine. Looks good. Can... And by the way guys, don't worry too much about erasing. Sometimes it looks cool to combine pen and pencil. You can clean up a little bit at the end, I guess. I'm going to leave most of it for now. Um, our Spinosaurus has got a cool pattern on it as well. It's got like little arches that go up. And each of these is like a little bit wider than that, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I want to get my hand out of the way because I know that's very annoying for those of you who are trying to follow along with the tutorial. One of you guys commented recently that why do I always pick the best drawings and make them speed drawings and not tutorials? And the reason is just because um, when I do a speed drawing it's like it's much more relaxing, you know? It's like you can I feel like I draw much better when I'm not talking and stuff. And also I have a lot more time. So like some of those drawings took several hours and stuff like that. And it would have been very difficult to make a tutorial out of them. That being said, 
this is one of those drawings that <laughs> I might have speed drawn. I was thinking about it, but I was like, no, I'm going to make a tutorial out of it because it's so cool. I know you guys would love to, to follow along and draw it yourself. So I'm also going to put black on the very tip of the sail. Like so. I'll work from left to right. By the way guys, I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. I certainly did. A great time. Felt a little bit more normal than last year's Christmas, for sure. That looks very good. I'm on break right now from school, so that's why I have more time to do YouTube videos. Which is super fun. Alright, so we don't want to... Oh, I guess we do. We do need to put attention on the sail because that's a very important component of the Spinosaurus. But it looks pretty good already. Just a few more lines. Looks good. You can always add some scales and like little bumps here and there to get more texture but we will move on. So the sail attaches to the, I guess, yeah, to the spine, <laughs> or the spine. This is the spine, but yeah, the sail attaches to the back right about here. And you want to make the transition look smooth. Not like the sail is just like glued on or something. Okay, I'm going to put in the thigh and the knee. Move on to the foot. I want to try and fix this foot a little bit. It looks kind of weird to me. I know velociraptors fought with their feet and use that sickle claw, but it would be interesting to know if, like, the huge theropods used their feet to fight. They do have these huge claws on them. But the claws might, might be quite dull, you know, after stomping around all the time. They wouldn't be razor sharp like the velociraptors. So I'm interested to see, I think, yeah, there is a dew claw right here that we should include. And do the, I call them like the chicken lines on top of each toe. Because if you look at like chicken's feet, they have a similar bunch of rings on their feet and toes. Alright, so we're going to put in the calf muscle there. This leg is going to be shaded in a lot, so we might as well do that now. Looking good. Um, we can add some wrinkles here at the base of the belly of the Spinosaurus. Under the belly, we're also going to put shading. It's not going to be too dark, but it's going to be shading. And as you guys can see, I'm using a cross hatching method, which is like my favorite when using doing pen. It's quite effective. And now we can add a bunch of 
refining lines and wrinkles to the leg. Okay, so we'll move on to the shoulder blade. And the upper arm. It's going to have a long forearm. Then we can put in those fingers and claws. And guys, I'd like to know if you want me to do a tutorial of maybe like a Spinosaurus swimming in the water or something like that. I was looking at a bunch of Spinosaurus pictures this morning, so I got some inspiration. <laughs> I was like, wow, I don't think... I think Dinosaur Drawer has done a video of Spinosaurus swimming. But I definitely have not, so... I should probably make one sometime in the future. What's cool about my channel is that I never run out of things to draw. Like, there's an unending list of different dinosaurs and cool things I can draw. Like, I've barely even touched the amount of dinosaurs there are in the Jurassic World game. Like, it's got so many hybrids and dinosaurs and um, Ice Age creatures. It's crazy. So I'm adding some little details to the fingers here. So, looks good. Spinosaurus has like a muscular chest because it sometimes would walk on all fours, so that's why it's going to curve down here. I'm going to add those row of studs. I'll move my hand out of the way so you guys can like pause it if you need to. I often do that if I'm following a tutorial, I'll pause it at certain points so I can catch up. Okay, so I got one row of studs. And as you guys can see, I'm not following my original pencil lines completely. They're more like guidelines. <laughs> Looks good. Now I'm going to do some wrinkles on the belly. I was wondering this morning, what would it be like to, if dinosaurs were still alive, what would it be like to actually like go hunting after one? That would be like so scary. Um, <laughs> even if you had like a high powered rifle or whatever. So I'm sure a dinosaur could survive many shots before it died. They're just so big that, yeah. That's why it was kind of dumb for <laughs> the guys to go after Indominus Rex with tranquilizers and stuff. The animals are so big that, like, you'd have to have really potent tranquilizers to actually put it to sleep. All right, we can move on to the neck of our Spinosaur. Put some shading behind the lower jaw there. There's a bunch of dogs barking off in the distance. It's so weird. Not sure if the camera's picking that noise up. But Okay, so we got a bunch of shading for the neck. The neck has some little spikes on it, which 
which we will put in. Then do a bunch of curved lines to show the shape of the neck. Like so. Looks very nice. Nice and 3D. Let me switch out pens. Alright guys, for this put in the eye, which is a very important part, make it nice and big. I have the pupil facing at the car card on source. Gonna have brow ridge. It's got such an interesting skull, it's like very cool. A hybrid between like a crocodile skull and like a regular dinosaur skull. And crocodiles have very strong bites, so I'm sure. It was the same for Spinosaurus. Put in the teeth. I'm gonna make the teeth a little bit smaller than I drew them originally. Because our Spinosaurus is kind of far away, so the teeth will look smaller. I have that muscle that clamps the jaws shut. And this muscle is like scientifically accurate. We can see where the muscle attaches to the to the jaws. But I think paleontologists are not exactly sure what it would look like in like in fl when fleshed out. Because with crocodiles, it looks a little bit different than that. So put in the teeth. Looks good. Draw the other side, and I have the tongue there as well, in case you guys didn't notice. Put in the second row of teeth. Beautiful. Looks good. Some more refinement lines. Also guys, I'd like to do more live streams, but oftentimes the internet is not working too well, so Maybe if I get access to a, a spot with better internet, I could do more in live streams. Cause that, those are so much fun. Like right now, I'm like, if this was live, it'd be really cool. Cause I could be like, do you guys want me to, you know, like add this to it? Or, you know, you guys could help determine the outcome of the drawing. Like, do we want the jaws open, closed, like, different little tweaks you guys could make to the experience. So right now I'm just fleshing out our duckbill dinosaur. If you ask a bunch of kids like what's their favorite dinosaur, the answer is like almost never one of the duckbill dinosaurs. It's kind of funny. I love carnivorous dinosaurs, but the long-necked sauropods are like, they're so sweet. They're like, they're like the symbol of dinosaurs because they're so big and just, if you see a silhouette of a sauropod, you're like, that's a dinosaur. It's instantly recognizable. Okay, so this duckbill dinosaur has an interesting 
bunch of stripes on it. The duckbill dinosaurs probably just found safety in numbers and that's how they survived. Like wildebeest in Africa. I always feel bad for the animals that survive that way, like sardines. <laughs> It's like they have no defense except that there's so many of them. So we're gonna color in these stripes. Like so. I do have a Sharpie on hand, but I feel like if I put Sharpie in this drawing, it would change the vibe. Like, it'd make it look more like, well, I don't know. If you guys want to do Sharpie, you can, but I'm not going to do it for this drawing. They almost have like a greenish look to them sometimes when, when like the ink dries. Like this is black, but when you put like a Sharpie, sometimes the color is like a little off. And it really annoys me. <laughs> so then later I always like, when I'm editing the photos, I put them immediately to black and white. So everything is the same. Hue. So this adds more wrinkles to our duck billed dinosaur. Looks cool. Add some shading. Just add some ground in general. All right, I think we can move on to our Carcharodontosaurus, who has been patiently waiting for us to give him some attention. One of my friends for Christmas gave me an Amazon gift card, um, which was so cool because I ordered a bunch of different things, like a new mechanical pencil, some a bunch of like lead refill for the mechanical pencil, I bought a bunch of pens, a new like pencil box. Just it's so cool to order a bunch of art materials. Fresh art materials. <laughs> oh yeah, and I bought, a I bought a bunch of paper too. That's going to be put to good use. We're gonna put a bunch of like spikes and little like bony knobs around around the eye of the car card on source. Guys, just for the <laughs> sake of more comments, uh, comment below who you think would win in this fight. And give us a reason too. You could say like the Carcharodontosaurus is much better because it, its back legs are stronger, it's more like adapted to the land life and that's why it would be quicker on land and would just be able to push the Spinosaurus off its balance and stuff. Or you could say the Spinosaurus has um, got the stronger neck or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> The Spinosaurus is longer, but I have to check which one weighs more because they both look equally heavy to me. But I would say the Cochrodontosaurus is better suited for land land battles. It's like more agile, I guess. It could make quicker moves and spins. All right, looks good. I'll add some little scales. Okay, now to put in those rows of shark teeth. The Carcharodontosaurus should like charge forward and use the brunt of its weight to 
knock the Spinosaurus back and then take a bite then back off and like yeah use use the advantage of speed on land to take down the Spinosaurus and by the way guys these dinosaurs would have met because they lived in the same biome in the same um, the same area of northern Africa which was actually lush at one point there's like evidence that there was like huge lakes in the North Sahara Desert like around Morocco and stuff where these dinosaurs were unearthed which is super cool to think about In fact, North America must have been much different back then, too. I'm always kind of happy about the fact that T-Rex is an American. <laughs> I don't know why. I know a lot of you guys aren't American, so... Sorry. But Canadians also have a bunch of T-Rexes. And Alberta. It's like every continent, every continent has their cool dinosaur. Even Antarctica with the Cryolophosaurus. And South America's got the biggest dinosaurs like Giganotosaurus and Argentinosaurus. Also guys, Majingosaurus lived in Northern Africa. Jungosaurus has a special place in my heart because it was the first dinosaur I drew on my channel. And it's also the first dinosaur you get in Jurassic World again. Alright, so I put a bunch of shading here. The teeth look good. You might want to add yeah, more scales because that looks really nice. But I think we can move on to the neck. It's got a big vein that hides right behind the shoulder and goes to the back of the bottom jaw. And as I said earlier, the Carcharodontosaurus has a cool set of like blotches that form like a nice organic pattern on its skin. We can go ahead and color those in. Make sure that they follow the curve of the belly. These stripes will help make the make the curves, or yeah, <laughs> the blotches will help make the stomach look more three-dimensional. We don't want anything to look flat. Okay, <laughs> it looks a little bit like a Holstein cow right now, but <laughs> that will change in a minute once we add more wrinkles. Make the whole skin look a little bit darker.
Also guys, if you ever want to share your drawings with me, you can either shoot me an email. I'm not the best with email, if I'm going to be honest. Um, you can tag me also on Instagram. If you have an Instagram account, you can tag me at Danny the Dinosaur Drawer. And I will usually see it, so that's one way to share it. Um, yeah, because I love to see you guys, your work. A lot of you guys do like the tutorials better than I did them, which is really cool to see. You take like the the basic drawing I did and then just put a bunch more scales and better shading and just love to see how you guys make improvements off of the drawings on the channel. Also, if you guys haven't followed me on Instagram yet, you can go ahead and do that. I have it currently private. I'm pretty sure I have to double check. So you'll have to request first. Um, I usually allow most people unless they have like a weird profile. Um, but if I see it like, you know, a normal looking profile, I usually accept the follows. Just for a while I had a bunch of like weird like scammers and just bad people trying to like who were following me when I had my account public. So I was like, no, I'm going to make it private now. So yeah, it's currently private. But if you have like an art account, I will immediately let you follow me. What I've been doing on my Instagram is I usually post like two drawings and then one picture of me or something I'm doing and then two more drawings then one picture of me because I have a bunch of my friends who follow me but then I also have um yeah you guys who are like complete strangers all my subscribers who also follow me so I have to please both crowds <laughs> also if you guys are wondering what I look like or any of that type of thing because <clears throat> I've always wondered that about some YouTubers I've, who game and, or who do art and you never see their face. Um, you guys can go check out my vlog channel called Danny Adventure Vlogs. I'll have a link in the description below. And there you'll get plenty of opportunity to see my face <laughs> and the different things I'm doing. I'm like completely different people on the two different channels. Like on this one I'm much more professional I'd say. On the other one I'm trying to be like a vlogger and like a just do random videos. <laughs> okay, so we got a bunch of lines here, making our carcodontosaurus look very realistic. And start working on the thigh, on the quads here. The knee is going to be, we're barely going to be able to see the knee. We're more going to see like the back of the knee. Imagine the power of these animals, like their bones are so massive and their muscles must have been very strong as well. And the fact that animals so big can run so fast is just, is like crazy. Like I still can't imagine that hippos can run faster than humans, like it just seems so weird. <laughs> but like Usain Bolt, the fastest human, can't run as fast as a hippo. Like hippos when they want to, I think can reach like 30 miles per hour and stuff like that. I'll have to double check, but I know they're really fast. They have these stubby legs and like this huge fat body, it's crazy <laughs> that they can move so fast. And I'm sure if dinosaurs were still alive, we'd be amazed at how agile they were, even the huge ones. Alright guys, we're almost done. Gonna do some more shading here in the hamstring area of the leg. 
Or at least I should say we're almost done with the car card on Thesaurus. Because I still would like to, yeah, do those trees. <laughs> you guys thought you came here to draw dinosaurs. Well, I'm going to make you guys draw trees <laughs> today. I'm also adding a few little stripes here on the leg of our dinosaur. Also guys, comment below if you want me to draw uh, Claire with the Therizinosaurus. I really, I was going to draw it, then I was like, I, I'm not really good at drawing people. Like, especially with dream tutorials, I'm not very good at drawing people at all. Um, I can draw people, but it's hard to make them look like the person I'm drawing, you know? So, there's Claire in the water there, in that, in that picture, but I think I'm just going to mess it up completely, so I'm a little bit afraid to do that. If I did a speed drawing, I'd have more time and probably do a better job, but I'd be interested to know your thoughts on if you guys want me to draw Claire with the Therizinosaurus. At least we're pretty sure it's a Therizinosaurus. Alright guys, the time has come to draw some trunks. Not sure what type of tree this is, but they look pretty big since they're next to these huge dinosaurs. This summer I got to go to California and we visited like the redwood trees and they're so big. It's like dinosaur land completely. Like everything around the redwoods was large. Like the clover leaves were huge. I'm just waiting for like a sauropod to walk behind, walk out from behind the tree. As I said, we're going to keep the trees simple. See, we've got one here. I've got to be careful because my tripod's right here as well. This is like the closest tree. base of this tree will be right here next to the car card on source. So you can add one more here. This pen is slowly dying, so I'll switch it out. Kind of difficult to draw the roots <laughs> where the tree attaches. Um, but I think yeah, we've got two or three more, and we will be done with the trees. You can add them, add as many as you want. <laughs> that will be my last tree. Um, I encourage to do some work on the ground. You can add little rocks and bits of grass here and there. Drawing the ground will help with the perspective quite a bit. But yeah guys, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, I, I know I wasn't <laughs> doing the best job explaining on actually how to draw different things but if you found this helpful in any way be sure to leave this video a big thumbs up comment below what you think i should draw next and i will see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching